As our university marshal, Professor Dawson, escorts him forth, please join us in welcoming Mr. Sajid Shinoy, our student speaker for the 1996 exercises. Thank you. Distinguished guests, faculty, staff, students, ladies and gentlemen, and most of all, the class of 1996. I can visualize the scene again and again. 11.30 p.m., Saturday night, the 15th of August, 1992, Bombay International Airport, India. I was leaving home for the University of Richmond. And as I said that final goodbye to my parents, my family, and my friends. And as I saw hope, expectation, even a tinge of sadness in their eyes. And as I stepped aboard the Boeing 747 in front, I knew my life had changed forever. The next 36 hours on board the aircraft were a time of questions, of concerns, of tremendous uncertainty. <laughs> had I made the right choice in leaving my parents, my family, my home? Had I made the right choice in leaving my country, my culture, my background? Had I made the right choice in choosing the University of Richmond? And then, of course, there was that one nagging question, that one overriding concern. As one of only three Indian students on a Richmond campus of 3,000, would I ever fit in? My country was different, my culture was different, my experiences were different, my background was different, my language was different, my accent was different. Would I ever fit in? And so here I was, high above the clouds, grappling with these questions of culture, of interaction, of ethnicity. And what I didn't know was that 30,000 feet below on the ground, the world was faced with these very questions. The question of culture, the question of interaction. And so whether my aircraft took off from Bombay, where the Hindus and the Muslims lived together in a most fragile peace, or whether my aircraft was over Africa, where the Hutus and Tutsis of Rwanda and Burundi had this long-standing animosity, or whether my aircraft was over Bosnia, where the Serbs, the Croats, the Muslims and the Bosnians had broken yet another truce. The question was the same. Could different cultures ever come together to reinforce one another? Ladies and gentlemen, four years after that bumpy aircraft ride, this young Indian student had found his answer. He had been witness to the four most spectacular years of his life. The academics were great, the extracurriculars were great, his graduate school plans were great. But what left an indelible mark on his mind was none of this. Not the GPA, not Stanford, no. Instead, it were those special moments. Those moments of human interaction, those human relationships that can never quite be translated into words. The time this young Indian student spent his first Thanksgiving dinner with his debate team coach. That Thanksgiving evening, when I had my first American turkey and saw my first American football game, not knowing the difference between a tackle and a touchdown. <laughs> and yet, all of a sudden, just like this, this very different Indian student had become an inherent part of the great American tradition of giving thanks. The time I spent my first Christmas Eve with my journalism professor. That Christmas evening, when the relationship wasn't of a faculty member and a student anymore, but of two buddies who fought fiercely over every point in ping pong. <laughs> the time I had a long and honest talk with an American friend on the eve of a calculus exam. I didn't learn much calculus that night, but what I did learn was that as different as we are, different countries, different cultures, different continents, inherently, inherently, we're still the same. The time in December 92, when India was hit by communal riots, when violence and bloodshed was but a few hundred yards from my family and my home, and when my fantastic roommate from freshman year sat up the entire night, giving me hope, strength, and courage at every step. Yes, four years after that bumpy aircraft ride, I have found the answer to culture. 
I have found that it has taken just a little understanding, just a little sensitivity, just a little open-mindedness, just a little empathy on the part of this community, this University of Richmond community, to change my life like never before. I have found it makes no difference what culture you follow, what your background is, what your experiences are, what language you speak, what accent you have. The commonality of the human bond far transcends these superficial differences. And yet, look around at the world today. Look around at the very regions that were faced with the same question of culture that I was faced with four years ago. Look at Bosnia, where between 92 and 96, 300,000 people have been slaughtered to death. Bosnians, Serbs, Croats, Muslims, all because they came from a slightly different heritage, or culture, or history. Look at Bombay, India, where in one maddening week, 92, 2,000 Indians, Hindus and Muslims, lost their lives fighting with one another. They fought over a mosque. They fought over a structure made of brick and mortar. 2,000 human beings lost their lives. Look at Africa, where between 92 and 96, one million Hutus and Tutsis lost their lives. Just comprehend that for one small second. Between the time you were a freshman and a senior, one million people lost their lives. Fighting over culture, over history, over background. Yes, just look at the badness around. The world has fought hard to highlight its differences. We have forgotten our inherent similarities. Why? All because what was missing was a little understanding, just a little sensitivity, just a little open-mindedness, just a little empathy. Two similar questions of culture in 92, two diametrically opposite results in 96. And so, to the class of 1996, I say, go and distinguish yourselves like never before. Go and get the best of jobs, the most rewarding of careers, go to the best of graduate programs, go and make a real difference in your communities. But not for one moment, not one moment, ever forget the memory of these four years. The memory that just a little understanding, just a little sensitivity, just a little open-mindedness, just a little empathy on your part can mean the difference between complete despair for one young boy in Bosnia and remarkable hope for another young boy here at Richmond. Thank you.